If you'd like coaching, replay analysis, or a personal guide, or you're simply enjoying the content, please consider dropping a coin or two on Patreon. Thank you. While these days Zeus is fairly popular in support position, when the ran in the middle, he's a hero that is hard in my farm too, and respectively doesn't take too much time or farm to come online. And when picked into proper lineups, can be devastating to the enemy's map control efforts. Let's find out why. When picking Zeus, be aware that while he can still comfortably farm against the hardest of the lane matchups, it is the post laning stage you should be worrying about. So while Huskar can plant himself between creeps and threaten heavy harassment damage, going into mid and late game his threat would be next to non-existent. Likewise, while a storm might be comfortable to lane against, he will threaten a kill on Zeus at any other point of the game, forcing you into delaying your power spikes in favor of defensive items. For this reason, Zeus is best reserved as a last pick, or when enemy picked their mid before the carry, as position 1 heroes rarely include heavy mobility heroes that would threaten Zeus, say for PA, Ursa or Slark. Now on to laning. First thing you should do is vision check for close wards to the tower and otherwise the popular spot to the left. If you still found nothing, just get back to the starting position, don't waste your mana for more than one check, you'll need it. While laning, if you have higher base damage and the opponent doesn't threaten too much harassment, feel free to use right clicks over spells, but just beware that the animation is god awful and sometimes higher damage will still result in improper timing thanks to the backhand swing and missile travel time. So, in order to be safe, especially on ranged creeps, best to use spells to secure. Your W will always be safer than your Q if the opponent is in good position to deny. And if the opponent can dish out somewhat decent harassment, your ideal wave positioning will always be pushing in between towers. Using W and Q to nuke down the range creep will immediately begin pushing the wave towards the enemy mid and in return push his next wave toward yours. This lets you secure more creeps while taking less damage, but however, eats more mana, as you're relying more on spells and right clicks. Half mangoes ready, especially under the tower if your auto attack leaves the creep with under 10 HP, which will require quick securing with Q. Another benefit of having the lanes in between towers is that you can use the time until the next wave to stack the jungle, and return to the lane without missing any last hits. You might think that playing this way leaves no room to knock down enemy's health pool with lightnings, and you're right. But we've picked Zeus not for lane domination properties, there are better heroes for that. If you dedicate your mana pool to wear down your opponent, your lasted potential will suffer, and also such tactic is extremely vulnerable to selves. Opponent heals up, you're left with no mana, and now he's collecting last hits comfortably while you sit there waiting for rune or courier deliveries. So, the ideal play most of the time is to deep push yourself and let the opponent push to you. You're both farming, but if you can peacefully last hit under the tower with just right clicks, you're saving mana to use in between camps, couple that with mana boots and clarities, and you can support your farming non-stop until the agonims. Soul Ring helps massively in that regard and is one of the my go-to items for Zeus, which stays useful until the very late game. Now if you consider how fast Zeus moves around the map, the less time he has to travel to farm, the better his farm will be. Makes sense, right? For this reason, Zeus's early game movements should mostly consist of lane, jungle and runes in between. The only time you'd walk to the side lanes is with a good rune pickup or to possibly weaken the target lane to let your team capture outposts more easily. For any other reason, your ultimate should be plenty help to secure kills and experience, especially with the recent change. So, with just a lane jungle rotation and securing kills with our ult, we're looking at around 15 to 20 minute timer on the Agonims, depending on how easy of a lane you had and how many ult opportunities presented themselves. And once you acquire the Agonims, your playstyle changes dramatically. Now, depending what is happening on the map, you have several options. If the game went even, you should begin joining fights with your team, claiming most contested spots on the map. 
With a threat of W, Q, Alt and Nimbus, most heroes should die or be very close to dying and retreat, allowing your team to knock down a tower. If all goes well, every time ult soft cooldown, you should be able to repeat this process. If however, team is behind, our Nimbus, instead of being used to secure kills, is now used to push waves anywhere on the map. Simply position the Nimbus to strike enemy ranged creep first and to continue wiping out melees next. And variations of these will be your Nimbus usages for most of the game. If an objective is being pursued or a fight is about to break out, you help your team with Nimbus and ultimate as needed. If the play is to be more passive, Nimbus will be used to de-push more dangerous lanes. Likewise, your ult will either be used to break initiations and secure kills or, again, if the play is to be more passive, scout out enemy locations which will almost always reveal any incoming ganks and pinpoint safe farming locations for the rest of your team. Radiance Middle Tower be Now, depending on status of how fat each hero on either team is, you can either safely walk with your team and play behind their course while being adequately protected, or the enemy is fat enough to shake off incoming initiations and seek you out in the backlines. This is where items like Ether Lens and Boots of Travel will be the deciding factor on how you will approach any combat scenario. If the increased cast range will let you safely stay further away and disengage as needed, ideally you will want to play with your team and continue dropping your spells from moderate range. If however, for any reason the enemy can reach you easily, and being anywhere near team fights produces a high death risk, your ideal play is to not even be near your team at all. Instead, you're looking to outpush every single lane where the enemy is not grouping up. Travels and Nimbus lets you achieve this while mostly being out of direct danger. This way, while you're doing less in actual team fights, you're creating an advantage indirectly by forcing the enemy to dedicate separate heroes to de-push the lanes you've shoved and separated enemy heroes are less likely to engage in successful teamfights and the less of them you encounter in separate lanes, the less you should worry about being killed while pushing. Now, after Nimbus, Aether and Travels, you're free to build however you see fit. In most of my games, I prefer to skip on defensive items unless absolutely necessary and instead further improve on every aspect I've talked about earlier in the topic. Both Octarine and Refresher along with a cooldown reduction talent significantly improves how much damage you do and how fast you move around important parts of the map. The best defense is offense in this case, either by being directly involved in teamfights or rapidly shoving waves back at enemies. And the level 25 talent is sure to help with whichever option you were lacking before. So in the end, while your team might only see you dropping gold every once in a while, in reality, you're either shredding through enemies' HP pools from the trees, or maintaining every single creep wave traveling into the direction of your enemies, thus generating enormous space throughout the game. Eventually, unless the enemy has too big of a lead, can catch you too easily or withdraw, it is very likely your team will sooner or later begin utilizing that space and start working towards the enemy throne. 
And this concludes the topic. Thank you for watching, good luck. Radiance bottom barrack. Radiance bottom. If you were a blinger, I'd say wicked sick. Bow to your knees. Where do you think you all you have done a great service? Ownage.